Hello everyone, this is BookBiz, and welcome to my first Minecraft tutorial. Right now, I'm on my private web Minecraft server that I use with my family, and I'm in the middle of a mob tower we built, and I wanted to share this because I've made a few refinements to the basic design that Lucklin outlined in his Minecraft WB post and I thought they were worth sharing with you guys. Uh, and after we take a look at the mob tower there's also um, some things about infinite water that are generalizations of the traditional concepts that people have about that that I want to uh, go over. So that if we have time that'll go in this video otherwise it'll go in a second part that I'll record immediately after this. And the first thing to see about this version of the mob tower, the basic design is the same. You have the water flowing into the lava, the lava is propped up by ladders, and the ladders flow in. The water then also has a loot chute that flows down onto the floor into a collection area. And the first thing to observe here is that instead of making the water two squares wide the way Lecklin did, I made it three squares wide. And this was because spiders kept landing diagonally and they didn't get into the water. Um, this is complicated now in the beta by the fact that spiders can climb out, so I'm going to have to replace this dirt here on the sides with something that's uh, less vulnerable to spider climbage, but uh, under the original design prior to the beta 1.2 when spiders couldn't climb, this having three blocks across for the water meant that a spider couldn't fall down the tube and then land diagonally and crawl away to safety. Uh, and So that took care of that issue, at least until now. The second thing you'll notice is that the sides of the mob grinder are open and the floor here is grass. Uh, this is in order to get a bit more variety in the type of mobs that I capture. Um, this way we can get animals and you know pigs and cows and chickens and collect their loot too. And it also uh, gives opportunity for mobs to come in from the outside. You'll notice that there's these little steps that are intended to uh, keep mobs from escaping, although it's not perfect because I wanted to leave room for myself to get out. But the other, but this basically allows animals to spawn inside here or outside here and then walk into the trap and provide me with their material, whether it's pork chop or leather or feathers or arrows and now bone or sulfur, and so on. So the bottom floor here is well lit, which isn't typical of the mob grinders that have been demonstrated in the past. Uh, I'm not even going to try that. The third feature that's unique about this, or maybe not unique, but different about this mob grinder from the one that's been recorded in previous videos is that the channels feed into the mob tower. Uh, this just consolidates the loot um, accumulation. Um, th we're on a small peninsula here, so the channels don't go very far. But they all feed into this one side of the mob tower, and again, the animals hit it the same way, and the mobs. Um, this glass here is part of my early experiments to see if spiders can not climb glass. Uh, the results are inconclusive. They did seem to be able to climb out of the water on the glass, but they were able to climb up the sides of this building over here. Um, that's really a side issue which I'll pl I plan to get into in a later video if no one else covers the topic. Uh, but anyway, those are the basic refinements of the mob grinder that I've made. Um, the other aspect of its construction that I think is worth mentioning is that the... Uh, 
is that I've kind of built it from the ground up in the sense that I went and plotted... I built the loot chutes first and then worked outward from there. I mean, I had a rough idea of what the footprint would be. But the first digging I did was the actual loot chutes because when you have four loot chutes coming in, it takes some coordination to get them all to land in the same place. And that coordination is a lot harder when you're dealing with um, lava and flowing water from the actual trap. So I was able to get this down to three pressure plates. Um, it's also possible to get it. I'm sure it's possible to get it down to one pressure plate if you have the flows coming in stacked one above the other or some similar arrangement. But this is easy enough to gather up. And then I have an indicator. I didn't bother to bury the redstone, but I have an indicator that goes up the side of the stairs here and lights up when it um, when any of the pressure plates are activated. So that's that's a typical setup. But the key point there is I did that first before I went and actually dug the trenches for the uh, actual trap. And just to give you an idea what I've accumulated in there, it's pretty much all of this. Uh, this doesn't include the food items and the arrows, but um, ju in just one day of play I collected 64 bones, because for some reason we had a flood of skeletons. That was, or I should say, that was one evening of real-time play. That was more like three or four Minecraft days, but it was a surprisingly high amount. Um, so I think maybe the beta is producing more loot as well. The 1-2 beta as opposed to the earlier 1-1 one, one beta. Okay, and for a little fun, I don't have a view of... There's a little bit of a view here of the mobs actually dying, but... Oops. better view is actually from over here. Right now I'm on peaceful, so there won't be anything actually in there, but I wanted to make sure I was able to demonstrate this without getting interrupted. Um, the there's, This is a viewport. Every once in a while when I am in active mode, you can see mobs falling in the corners there. And you'll notice even in daylight, those corners aren't particularly well lit, even allowing for the fact that the... Um, the bottom is open, and that's another feature of the mob, and that grinder here, and that's up on the top floor. And what we have is we have an open floor here with water, but then the holes are covered to provide shade for the lower floors. There's two interior floors, and this allows some spawning in the daylight in the interior floors and then the bottom floor would spawn farm animals all the time it's open and then this floor is active at night and that provide as you saw from that chest that provides more material than i've been able to use at least by myself and with my family on the server so that pretty much sums up the discussion of mob grinders here i do have to uh make it beta 1.2 compliant by changing most of these walls to a material that spiders can't climb out of. Um, and actually I did forget to mention that in addition to being three wide the channels are too deep and that just lets me have a flat spawn floor inside the um, inside the tower while still not allowing the normal mobs to get out. And finally, the footprint here is 25 by 25. That's one block, two blocks, one for each side wall, then six blocks for each of the two channels that occur, and then 8, 1, and 8 is 17. That's 8 for the water flow, 1 for the partition, and 8 for the water flow in the opposite direction, which is also the size of the mob floor is 17. So you have 2 plus 6 plus 17 is 25. So that's a nice uh, round number to work with as well. 
So now that really is all I have on the mob grinder.